Okay, one meal a day. So let's talk about three things. I want to talk about why you would do one meal a day. I want to talk about how you do one meal a day, and then what the heck do you eat when if you're only going to eat one meal a day? How do you maximize your macronutrients? Okay. So let's start with the why. And what I want to do is give you guys an hour by hour time a, a snapshot. Of what happens when you start to go into this fasting period? If you are new to fasting and this is brand new information for you, what I want you to realize is that you, I want you to start thinking that there is a time period in which you eat and there is a time period in which you fast. So those of you that have been fasting for a while, you know that the longer you fast, the more benefits happen, the more healing benefits happen to your body. So when we go one meal a day, what happens is at about 13 hours without any food, your insulin levels are really starting to go down. The insulin levels that were secreted from the night the night before, the meal before. And your insulin levels are starting to really go to a whole new level of low, which is fabulous. Because as that insulin level goes low, at 13 hours, it will trigger growth hormone. So growth hormone is that hormone that you lose after 30, and you need it to burn fat. You need it to slow down the aging process. It's a very important hormone that. One of the best ways to get it is through 13 hours of fasting. You can also get it through a very specific exercise. Otherwise, you're not getting very much growth hormone after 30, after your age of 30. So at 13 hours of fasting, you've got growth hormone. 15 hours, now you're moving more into a state of autophagy. More growth hormone, more autophagy, insulin levels are low. You're about, you're, you, for most of you at 15 hours, you're gonna start to see some ketones kicking in, although they can kick in a little bit lower, but as insulin's going down, as your blood sugar's going down, at about 15 hours, you're gonna see those ketones start to rise and you're gonna get just a little hair, a little wee bit of autophagy. So this is awesome because this is about where, when ketones go up, this will be about where your hunger is going to start to go away. Um, a lot of you guys that are expert fasters, put it in the notes if this happens to you because a lot of new fasters are coming to our channel and trying to understand how do I do this and not be hungry. So at that 15 hour mark, you've got ketones coming up, you start to become more mentally clear, you start, your hunger starts to go down, and all of the benefits of intermittent fasting that we've seen clinically and, and through research happens between this 13 to 15 hour mark. It's, it's beautiful, if, and there's so much, I mean, the New, New England Journal of Medicine just came out uh, reviewing all the research done on 13 to 15 hours of fasting and have found that this time frame is so helpful for reversing disease, preventing disease. Uh, I mean, the list is, is endless. I did a whole video on it. Okay, that's at 15. Now at 17 hours is when you're really starting to get autophagy. And autophagy is that place where the cells are repairing themselves. So now your cells are starting to sense, hey, there's no more food coming. The, ins the insulin's not high, glucose isn't high, no more food's coming. So the cell, the intelligence inside the cell will look around and it will start to repair itself. It will start to clean up the cell. This is pivotal for your health. So I love the 17 hour fast because you can really start to stimulate autophagy. But I like for you guys that are one meal a day, I like for you to go even one step further. And that is where we come to the, to this one meal a day moment. And if you are truly going 24 hours without any food, which is what I consider one meal a day, you have now at 24 hours hit this point where you are starting to stimulate intestinal stem cells. This was a research done out of MIT, and it showed that at 24 hours, that once those intestinal stem cells got rebooted, what would happen is it would start to repair the inner lining of the gut. So this leads me to this idea that many of you are following, some of you this is new, 
is that if every day we do one meal a day and we maximize that 24 hour mark, you're not only getting growth hormone that you hit at 13 hours, you're not only getting the ketones that you hit at 15, you're not only getting the autophagy that you hit at 17, but now you're getting intestinal stem cells that are being repaired over and over and over. We also know at 24-ish hours, that you start to get GABA that kicks in. So it calms you. We also know the, that around 24 hours, your dopamine receptor sites are starting to get rebooted and repaired so that you can feel joy again. We also know at 24 hours that it stimulates a part of the Krebs cycle that will help your body upregulate antioxidants. So that 24 hour mark is critical. Now, here's the next question is, how do you do this 24 hours? Does it have to be dinner to dinner? Can it be lunch to lunch? And that's a real personal preference. So you can make lunch your one meal a day. Maybe you have lunch and then when you're done eating lunch, you go to another 24 hours and you have a lunch again the next day. I know a lot of our patients in our clinic do that. So it doesn't have to be dinner to dinner. It could be breakfast to breakfast. You just need a 24 hour period in which you are going without food. Now, I know a lot of you guys that do one meal a day, cause I see you guys in my resetter tribe, is that a lot of you, what you'll do is you'll go 22 hours or 23 hours. Those are all great, but it's that 24 hour mark that you're gonna get the intestinal stem cells. So. You get to choose. Do you go breakfast to breakfast, lunch to lunch, dinner to dinner? Are you gonna go 22 hours, 23 hours? Or are you gonna really try to hit that 24 hour mark so you can get those intestinal stem cells? So how you do it is up to you, but those are the options. Okay, the last piece is, well, what do you eat? Now this is also up to you. And I know a lot of you will just do fasting and then whatever you eat, you eat. You don't really care about what you eat. If you want to take your health to another level, my recommendation is what we call a ketobiotic diet, which is you're doing 50 grams net carbs, you're doing 50 grams of protein, and you're working to get over 60% of your food coming from good fat. The reason that we do a 50 gram net carb, which is a little bit higher for the ketogenic diet, is because we want you to lean in to the vegetables. We want you to get the greens, we want you to get the more vegetables just in general into your diet because it feeds your microbiome. Going keto doesn't mean avoiding vegetables. Vegetables are key for that microbiome. So when you look at like best case scenario, the best case scenario is that you go 24 hours a day or eat, you, fasting every single day and you're doing keto, so you're keeping your blood sugar down, you're getting those ketones, and then you're feeding your microbiome with all of the, the healthy vegetables. That is the most optimal way to live. There are a lot of variations from that, but if you are new to fasting, if you are new to keto, that is my recommendation. Start there, master that, and then from there you can do the variations that I teach here. So. One meal a day, incredibly healthy. It can help you in so many ways. So here's my question for you. If you are a one meal a day person, let us know in the comments, how is that working for you? What are you noticing? So that people that are new to one meal a day can actually see the results that a lot of people are getting because our community is really powerful here on YouTube. Okay, if you've made it this far in the video, it's a sign you definitely need to subscribe. And if you wanna learn more, if you love that video and you wanna dive into more of the information I have on this channel, go to this video.